There we go. There we go. Come on, come on. <laughs> All right. I think I'm broadcasting. Honestly, it's a little bit hard to tell sometimes. Anyway, welcome back. My name is Dan. Indication. Okay. <laughs> My name's still Dan. And this is Daily Art Adventure number 593. Woohoo! And I have entitled it there on YouTube, as you can see, as learning to draw best by seeing both dark and light. Now, I've talked about this a little bit uh, periodically on my channel, but I realized this is something, this is a principle that I stumbled on quite by accident that has been helping me. As many of you know, my, the, what I paint more than anything else is cityscapes. I enjoy painting all kinds of things, but I love painting cityscapes. And this trick of focusing on dark and light helps me a lot. Now, before I start painting on this painting, because which I'm going to do in white, so that's key. I want to. I just put together a, a a little lesson that I'm going to start using. I am going to start using on a regular basis when I'm teaching drawing. You ready? Here it is. So here is a lovely <laughs> photograph of yours truly. I took just three minutes complete with microphone and paint spatters on shirt. There. So there's a there's a picture and let's say bless your little heart, you want to do a drawing of me. I'm just using my face obviously and his examples. That's silly. So that's the black and white photograph. Okay. Here is what human beings normally tend to focus on when they're looking at the photograph. Here's what they see. Let me let me do that again. Here's a black and white photograph. And here's what we tend to see. Our eyes naturally gravitate to the darker areas. Now, <laughs> while I was doing this, I heard some person in my voice said, yeah, but what if you're painting black people? <laughs> same principle, same principle. <laughs> exact same principle, doesn't make any difference. Okay, so this is, this is not only germane to painting white people. Here's the photograph. Here's what, in other words, our eyes tend to focus on the dark areas. That's what we see and that's what we gravitate toward. Now, how different would it be instead of focusing on just the dark areas, instead we were to see and focus on the light areas? Whoa! Or how about e uh, even the more lighter areas? Wow! So that's that same photograph. There I am. That's just the lightest areas. If we focus on the light areas, you see, we see something very different than if we focus on the dark areas. So here's the fairly light areas, and this is the very light areas. But even these two, what a difference those two images are. That's focusing on the dark. That's what our brain in neutral, in normal, that's what our brain normally does. What a different picture if we focus on the light areas. Now the obvious question is, so what's the best thing? Now I had to get a little bit, get a little bit creative because what I'm trying to do here is to get your brain to see the pink fuchsia, pale red stuff and the purple stuff and ignore the white stuff because the white is all midtones. Okay, but I'm trying to get you to ignore what is the best way to, to capture uh, a realistic image? And that is, it is to see both the dark and the light areas. And it's that B, light areas, is what we typically don't focus on. Does that make sense? Again, real quickly, here's a photograph. What we normally see is this. How much of a better artist, a better renderer would we be if we didn't, if we not only focused on the dark areas, but we focused on the light areas, either one, either extremely light or medium light. All right. So I, I have realized, oh, that's what good artists do. And I've never taught that before. Now, 
whoops, it turns out I'm just about running out of white acrylics here in this little pot. I think I've got enough to go. So here I am. Uh, let me show you my, my go by, my, my photograph that I'm working from to paint this scene. Got it? So that's what I'm staring at. Glance at that just for a minute. I've got it taped up to a bookshelf over here to my right. And so now, and this is what I, I stumbled on because I'm painting in white. What am I going to focus on now in the photograph? What am I going to focus on? Not white stuff, light stuff. Yeah, anything that's light, that's what I'm going to be really looking at. So, oh, by the way, as you can see, after, if you were with me for the last episode, I, was, I, I finished by doing the black pencil marks, right? Then after that, when you weren't looking, I did two major glazes. I did yellow-orange glazes with lots of medium, that is to say with lots of acrylic medium in the brushes and quite a bit of water too. So I did yellow-orange, then I let that dry, then I did blue, phthalo, and ultramarine. Um, when you have this much pencil on the, on the canvas, I want to mention this because people uh, complain to me periodically that I tried that but the pencil smears. The, the brushes, and here's where the brushes, here are the brushes I was using, okay, so four inch brushes. Yes, the pencil does smear, it does. Therefore, I, I, I'm quite disciplined at just putting down a stroke and leaving it and not brushing it, very little bit. And so in these areas, um, you, you can see gray from the, from the pencils that's been smeared around, but it doesn't bother me a bit, it looks just fine. Uh, but I don't, I don't rub it so that it gets uh, more and more smeary, if I can use that word. All right. So uh, what I've done since our last episode, I'm being way too neat here. Uh, what I've done then is um, glaze the entire painting. Maybe you've heard me say before that one of the great, great, great dangers of putting lines on your canvas, like pencil lines, any kind of line, even paint lines, but lines, as soon as you put pencil, as soon as you put lines on your canvas, you are gravely tempted. Did I say that strongly enough? <laughs> you are gravely tempted to color in the lines. So as you can see, I'm being quite careful not to write like okay right now i am coloring the lines but watch now i'm coloring outside the lines does that make sense so i get i accomplish both by doing that i'm both fairly careful like that like those strokes right there and then i'm intentionally messy so i still have the benefit of the carefulness it's, it's still mostly visible but i have also the benefit of of looseness we like looseness because it's interesting marks. It, it uh, makes it look like a human being was present and made this painting. Imagine that, because guess what? A human being was present <laughs> and did make this painting. Or I should say, and did make these marks, is more to the point. We like to see human-shaped marks on our paintings. We like to see, and when you're going like this, that does not leave human-shaped mark, marks. I've talked about that ad nauseum just about in the past, so I'm not going to belabor the point. Interesting marks is what I usually call. Now, the, this one of the unusual things about this particular painting, same thing with last week's painting, uh, is that the sky is decidedly dark. It's a, it's a dark and gloomy sky. It's not a happy, I mean, I, I, it is happy in a way. I, I love stormy uh, sky uh, landscapes. And evidently so does, so does my client uh, because they specifically pointed to um, one of my paintings from my website and said, ooh, 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 we like that one. So I am doing, happily, doing uh, what they requested by, by including uh, this stormy sky. 
So see that normally the sky would be very light and normally in a landscape the sky is the lightest object uh, in on the whole canvas is the sky. But uh, with weather that certainly can change and that that's the case with this painting. It's a a glowering, is that the word? Threatening sky, stormy sky, whichever word you want to use there, fine with me. Um, so again, the point I want to make is that by focusing on the light areas in a subject matter, while you're while you are rendering, drawing, while you're capturing the image, don't just focus on the dark stuff. Also focus on the light stuff, and it, it helps me a great deal when I'm doing um, anything. But it's certainly when I'm doing uh, these cityscapes. As you can well imagine, uh, I am not uh, I'm not a slave to my reference there. I am I am of course free to make any creative changes I deem necessary, and I deem many of many such changes necessary. So I'm again I'm not I'm not a slave to the photograph at all. But I let me let me digress just a little bit. Um, let me tell you, I, I, I want to close an escape hatch that some artists are tempted to take when they're, when they're painting, especially when they're beginning. They hear somebody like me say, oh, no, no, you don't have to copy the photograph. You don't have to do a copy of the photograph. <laughs> and I feel like inside I can hear them go, Whew, oh, good, thank God. <laughs> because why? because they don't want to have to do the hard work of capturing uh, in a realistic manner the, uh, the image that they're trying to paint. Uh, and that is not the right response. <laughs> when someone says um, you don't have to copy the photograph, that doesn't mean you can suddenly go in lazy boy mode and just say, oh, well, oh, well, why didn't you just say so? Then I'll just paint messy. I don't care if it's realistic or not. Do you hear that? that, that, that you know that's a wrong response because, you know, that's just not the way reality works. <laughs> any, any reality that seems to, to give you a, a cop out, an excuse to just be lazy, yeah, and, 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 and something wrong with that picture. So, no, that is not the, the, so what does it mean then if you don't have to copy the photograph? The answer is, oh no, you want, you want to use the photograph to capture a realistic image. Um, you outdo the photograph, you don't underdo the photograph. Let me say that again. You go beyond the photograph adding artistic taking artistic license and adding, adding artistic elements to the photograph, you don't take details from the photograph and wimp out and say, oh, thank God I don't have to do that because that's too hard. And Dan Nelson says, I don't have to copy the photograph. I'm glad I got that off my chest <laughs> and put it on yours. <laughs> Some of you are going, oh, no, you just ruined my life. I'm sorry. <laughs> It's for your own good. I'm trying to help you here. <laughs> Does that make sense? <laughs> when, when an artist, when the teacher like me says, oh, no, 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 you don't copy the photograph. What we mean is you're not a slave to copying the bad details of the photograph. That doesn't mean you get to just, you know, do a lousy drawing. <laughs> Again, I, I'm afraid I know that that's what way too many wannabe artists, that's what they do, and that's how they take that that statement. It's like, oh, good, I don't have to copy. Now, and there is freedom. I'm not saying, of course, I, 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 okay, I'm not going to chase down every every little iteration of that of that of that principle. Of course, you're not you're not a slave to copy every single detail. Actually, realistically, again, go to go to my website and you see how I've handled this. Uh, over the over the years, um, I don't have to do every single thing that's there, um, but I don't just want to um, fall into the trap of 
using that as a cop out. All right, this is, I, and that's, I feel like that's so obvious, I don't want to belabor it any more than I've already belabored it, <laughs> which is too much. So, um, just one more thing I'm doing. I don't do this terribly often, but every once in a while, um, I'll use a palette knife. This is a, as you can see, a palette knife for big paintings. <laughs> otherwise known as a spackling knife. It's a hardware store product, not an art store product. Um, I usually reserve uh, you know, the palette knife for the oil stage, but not always. Every once in a while, I go, nah, these lines are so, I don't know what the word is, distinct, important, or something like that. Um, I want to go ahead and, and get them going, even in the underpainting stage. One of the advantages of doing it in the underpainting stage is, of course, there are many layers that are going to go on top of this, so these lines that right now are very, very, very prominent, that stick out, rather, um, um, I can diminish as much as I want uh, and then typically I redo them in the oil stage so I'll be doing probably this very exact same thing yeah I like that and and uh, doing doing any object any element in both the underpainting stage and the overpainting stage I call it uh, is is usually usually creates a charming effect. Some street lights. I'm going to have a lot more light th than, uh, than the photograph. I'm going to have a lot more uh, a light bursting from the street scene down here. Now, this, this, the, uh, the scene that I did last week was a, from up there looking this way, was a morning, morning light coming from this way. This now is looking north, so the sun is setting in our west. This is an evening scene, and um, I'm visualizing, I'm feeling it uh, as as considerably uh, darker in the evening, uh, darker painting. So things like, I'm thinking things like uh, street lights will, will be more of an element and, and car lights. They were, they were an element in last week's painting, but I, I think they're going to be even more so in this painting here. All right, that's a good place for me to stop. I see just a few chats. Thank you very much. So we're, let me tell you where I'm going to go from here. Probably won't broadcast it. The next thing I'm going to do is pick up some smaller brushes and do dark details in transparent acrylic. Okay, in dark transparent. That should be unnecessary for me to say that. That's redundant. If it's dark, it's transparent. If it's transparent, it's dark. Uh, be that as it may, I have said it. <laughs> I have stated the redundancy, so I hope you got the point. Dark details with small brushes. And uh, after that, I'll, I'll come back and do glazes on top of probably all of this white is going to get uh, warmed up. It's going to have yellow-orange on top of it. Um, I just want to point out that you can still see much of my uh, underpainting abstract here, there, and everywhere. And I hope I can retain that, keep that, rescue that, save that. I f I'm still not completely happy with where I am with in my art journey because I'm losing too much of that. I, I really want to keep more of it than I, than I typically do, but we'll see. The, also, this is a commission piece, so I, I'm not likely to push the boundaries really far on a, on a commission piece. I'll, do, I'll experiment, so to speak, on my own time or on my own paintings. I won't do, I won't experiment quite as much on somebody else's. All right, just a couple chats. Hey, Zamorite, right, good to hear from you. Oh, my volume. 
oh, 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 doggone it. I am sorry about my voice being bad, um, screechy. Uh, I don't have my normal in-ear monitor because uh, I've got technical problems, need to order a new kind of in-ear monitor. <laughs> That's today's technical disaster. So I'm very sorry about that. Let me see if I can fix that here real quick, but I won't be able to tell. No, maybe. If, if somebody's still listening, if you want to let me know, David, if you want to let me know if that's any better. Wow. I am terribly sorry. I feel very uh, naked not having a monitor in my ear to pick up on that. I'm so sorry about that. Um, and Sue, uh, I mean, sorry, Zamorai, are, yes, when I use two, a brush in each hand, it's almost always uh, a different size and a different uh, type of brush, or at least a different size, almost always. Um, and just then, when I was painting with two hands, absolutely, I had, uh, here's the two brushes. I had a flat and a filbert. Uh, I don't know what numbers those are. A number eight and a number ten. So, yeah, very good question. Good observation. Yeah, I try to have. Okay, thank you, David. I'm glad to know that's better. I'll keep an eye on that. But, again, I'm going to order some new monitors. Uh uh, hopefully alleviating the, the problem we just had. Thanks, guys. Thanks for joining me. Appreciate it. If you like me, let people know. If you don't, let's just keep that to ourselves. <laughs> That's supposed to be funny, <laughs> even on the 40th time I've said it. All right. Well, have, a good, have a good night. Have a great Easter. Oh, by the way, I will, I'm going to take a chance on, on at, for some of you, and I'm, gonna, I'm painting in a church at a worship service on Easter Sunday morning, and uh, I think it'll be quite interesting. I, in, I, I finally this afternoon settled on an idea. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what it is, but I am going to broadcast that. And uh, so if you're one of those people that has a knee-jerk, angry reaction every time anything spiritual 